Good morning, everyone. And for some of you, good afternoon, or maybe even good evening. We are excited to bring this webinar to you. It is a collaboration between ESRI and AAG. Uh, today's webinar topic is about modern remote sensing and image analysis. Many of us has been working with the raster data and perform image analysis. So our goal in this webinar is to provide the latest updates on the technology in remote sensing and analysis from ESRI and also resources to get started. But before we do that, as a little bit of housekeeping, all attendees are in listen-only mode, but feel free to write your questions in the question windows at any time. And we will try to cover as many as we can during the QS session. This session is also recorded and we will make the recording available later. And at the end of the webinar, we will launch an exit survey. Please do participate on the survey so you can help us improving our webinars and also the way to get connected with us at ESRI and if you like to request for any assistance. Before we go to the main part of this webinar, we would like to start with the full question first. We would like to know the audience better here. So the full question, the first one is, what is your primary role? So let's open it. So I know that many of you have more than one roles or wearing multiple hats but this is a single choice um, question. Just choose the primary role. Thank you so much. It seems like 43% of you are teaching professors. Well, we are glad to welcome you. And 15% of your researcher, 25% GS professional, 10% students, and 7% others. Very nice. Thank you so much. So we can tailor our presentation accordingly. Now I would like to introduce our presenter for today uh, based on the order of the presentation. I myself am Kansarina Kurnia. I'm senior solution engineer with education team. My main role is to give technical assistance and advice to higher education institutions in um, S3 technology. And joining me is Peter Becker. Peter is a group product manager with the imagery team. And Delphine Kana, is a product engineer with the Learn ArcGIS team. So for the agenda, we will start with the few thoughts on the modern remote sensing and image analysis. Then Peter will ex extensively cover the breadth of imagery in ArcGIS today, the latest on the tools, capabilities, and deployment uh, option as well. Then I'm gonna come back to introduce some resources including ready to use apps and the workflows and few others as well. And the last part, Delphine will introduce the new teaching materials on in introduction to imagery and remote sensing. Now Delphine has spent so much time in curating this teaching package uh, with the hope it can help the development of university level curricula on the subject of imagery and remote sensing. And after that, we have QA and also we share again the resources. So we have a lot to cover. So let me start first with this first session, modern remote sensing and image analysis. As we know, the remote sensing technologies are advancing so rapidly. There's a lot of new technologies, starting with the emerging of the data from, collect, from imagery collected by drones, from LiDAR, from micro, um, satellites and all of these often come in the greater spatial temporals and uh, spatial resolution as well and in terms of the deployment now we have options to go to the desktop do the image analysis in the desktop in the server in the cloud private cloud or software as a service as well and are interconnected that you can actually share one workflow in one deployment to another and the increased volume of the data makes it necessary to have faster and more automated method, which lead also into new and refined analysis method, such as the machine learning and deep learning, which is now has been adopted in various domains. All of these are opening doors to new applications as a new type of data and analysis method become 
available to answer new questions and problems. So if I go into uses of imagery here, the use of imagery are increasing as well from the traditional use, such as in agriculture, as simple as detecting vegetation health to the more advanced precision agriculture, to the forestry and a lot in the climate and weather analysis. But now uses of imagery also start emerging in newer domains, such as in the engineering and constructions, because the drone data is more available now. We use it a lot with the humanitarian uh, ad as well, such as mapping the refugee camp and to the natural disaster response using the deep learning method to detect the damaged areas faster with the less human interaction. So it's a lot of exciting things in the uses of technology here, in the uses of imagery. With this, all the advancement, this give us more opportunity to learn, to teach and do the research as well. With that in hand, I would like to hand over the session to Peter, who will cover in more details on the latest in the technology and solution that we offer for imagery in ArcGIS. Peter, time is yours. So, thank you. Hopefully you can see my screen. Um, so, looking forward to give this opportunity to uh, present a little bit about the imagery capabilities within ArcGIS. So um, what we do within, within, I mean, ESRI is a, ArcGIS is a, is a massive system with lots of different uh, capabilities. Um, imagery is certainly a very important capability that has been, uh, that we've been developing for over the last 15 years extensively. And what we do is we actually break it up into five key sub capabilities, uh, which makes it easier to understand um, the, the whole system. Uh, initially, we have content, which is about really the content that's available within the ArcGIS. Within ArcGIS. There's the aspect of management, which is really how do we manage all the imagery that you may have within your organization and make that accessible to other people. There is the image mapping, which is really how to take that imagery and create derived products, such as author photos and digital surface models. Image analysis is really how to extract that information or extract information from imagery and includes aspects such as deep learning. And the visualization and exploitation, which is really how do we then take that imagery and other you know, vector and GIS and spatial data and combine it all together to create those applications for use and human interpretation of the imagery. So I'm gonna be going through each one of those steps a little bit, a little bit um, each one of those. The first one is really about the content, and this is really to re-emphasize that within ArcGIS, we support images from all different formats of images, lots of different formats of images and types of images. We support um, data from different sensors, so satellite, aerial, and drone sensors, but also all the different modalities of imagery. So that in includes not only sort of natural color imagery, but multi-dimensional data sets, characterical data, multi-spectral data, but also things like 360 images and videos and, and, and radar. And then we also provide that imagery in different ways. Um, you can actually have it either as local files or, or cloud storage, or you can utilize services. And we provide a lot of services uh, that can be used by users directly without actually having to download the, uh, download the data content. So with that, there's a huge amount of content that's available to perform not only visualization, but also analysis on the data. A lot of this content comes from the RGIS Living Atlas of the World, which really is the sort of the foremost collection of geographic information, including maps, apps, and data layers from really around the global, around the globe. There are thousands of data sets that are directly accessible within the Living Atlas. One of the first ones that most people see if you use a, if you use a base map within ArcGIS is just the, the choice of different base maps. So these are often used to provide simple con, con, contextual information about what's, avail what's available. Uh, and there, is a lot of diff there are a lot of different renderings of these base maps that can be used, as I said, to just provide context or to really provide different backdrop backdrops onto which you may want to add your other content, be it vector or image data. So those base maps are, are very, very useful. One of the main base maps is actually world imagery. Um, so world imagery provides that sort of imagery content that a lot of users use. Um, the imagery 
the world imagery is actually the most used data set within the living atlas uh, we get over a billion re tile requests a day um, from from that on that service there's a matter, massive number of people using it and that content comes from multiple sources a lot of it's coming from maxar who provide the uh, what they call the vivid standard um, data, which is global data at 50 centimeters to 1.2 meter resolution. Uh, but then we also have the vivid advanced data, which is about thousands metropolitan areas are covered with 30 centimeters. And even in the last, you know, in the last year, we've updated that with over a million square kilometers of new imagery, including um, about 1,200 different met metro areas. That's just one of the content. The other actually content comes from the community. So a number of contributions are actually provided by different countries uh, and in the last year uh, we've got we can see a list of the different um, uh, contributions that have been added a lot of that is at extremely high resolution the average resolution for that it goes down to about 15 centimeter resolution so that's a fantastic base map imagery this base map imagery can be added directly within the applications and but you can also add um, other um, data sources and as I mentioned before those data sources can come from the living atlas or they can come on from your own content or other other people con other people's contents from around from around, from around the web one of the data sets related to world imagery which is very interesting is the fact that we've actually produced this for very many years and therefore in many areas you can go back and see how the area has changed so you can actually use the world imagery wayback service to actually perform uh, to to review how changes have occurred over the world um, for a number of different years. Another very useful data set is the NAEP data set in the United States. So uh, we actually serve all the NAEP data from 2010 to 2019. It's updated approximately every two years. Uh, and what's stored and served there is the original NAEP data. So there's no compression being applied or, 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 or resampling. It's the original pixel values, which are then streamed across and available as what we call dynamic image services which enable users to actually use the imagery um, in, in applications, but also render it in different ways and perform different on-the-fly analysis on the data. So it's not just a background, but it can be used for various types of analysis as well as visual, visualization. The other big data set is Landsat 8, and that's been recently updated to include the collection, collection 2 data from the USGS, so that's sort of 11-band imagery. Um, again, it's all the data going back to 2013, and that's available both as level one, which is top of atmospheric reflectance, but also as level two, which is surface reflectance. And again, available as these dynamic image services. We'll be seeing some examples of those a bit later. Then there is Sentinel-2, which has also been recently added. This is actually all on the, um, it's actually stored on the Microsoft, um, uh, that, um, Microsoft planetary compute, and provides the Sentinel-2 data in level 1C as well as 2A data. And so the 2A data is quite unique in being the surface reflectance. It's really analytical ready, ready data. And again, it provides all the different bands and it's the whole, whole collection of Sentinel-2 data going all the way back to 2015 and it's updated essentially day, daily, but there's approximately five day uh, um, revisit cycle for that data. Um, the data set that we've recently released is the 10 meter, 10, as we 10, 10 meter land cover. Uh, this is a really interesting data set that was created from that Sentinel data by processing the 2000 um, um, data or the 2000 data. And that gives you 10 meter resolution data for um, resolution land cover for everywhere in the world from processed from the 2020 data. Um, but what's coming soon will also be updates to include the new 2021, but also going back to previous years to 2018 and 19. So that will allow, for example, change detection at 10 meter resolution for land cover globally on the world. This is an example of some data sets generated from that phenomenal Sentinel-2 data sets that, were, that are available. Other data sets of interest are world elevation. So world elevation provides uh, um, access to elevation data over the complete globe. Uh, the data sets range from you know, thousand meter very coarse resolution data sets all the way down to 25 centimeter data sets. It's a single service that provides the best available imagery elevation data uh, for anywhere in the world, but also gives you the opportunity to see all the different data sets available for anywhere in the world. And that includes both the terrain data as well as top of, top of battery. Access to that does require a subscription to RTS online. Um, but uh, there are no credits required for accessing it or anything. So uh, these, these data sets can be viewed in multiple different um, 
raster functions, so they can return things like slope and fill shade and elevation data values, and they can therefore be used not only for visualization, but also for analysis, as well as the basis for auth rectification of um, satellite imagery and aerial imagery. So within Levy Atlas, there are many, many global and regional data sets that cover various aspects such as ecosystems, land cover, landscape, you know, oceans and climates. Uh, so really, I'd, I recommend you go to Living Atlas and have a look at all the different data sets and start combining them into uh, different projects that you may be, may, may be wanting to work on. Let's go into image management. As I said, this is really about managing the, the, the content that you may have within your organizations. And the way that's done is to use an optimized data model for the Mosaic data set. The Mosaic data set allows you to reference all the different data sources coming from you know, different sensors or categorical data or all the different data sets can be referenced in a mosaic data set. In the mosaic data set, you then define the different processing to be performed on the imagery. Um, and once, once that's defined, you can then serve that out typically as dynamic image services. Alternatively, you can persist that as what we call a TPK or CRF. These are really um, persisted things like base maps or or rasters, which are very optimized for performing analysis. Op Mosaic data set also supports multidimensional data. Um, that means you can um, load data, specifically, let's say, scientific data, which has multi-dimensions and variables. And those can be all referenced within the Mosaic data set and then provide, um, provided as access directly uh, through what we call multidimensional rasters. So you can act as any slice or parameter within that data set. Or you can persist that into various formats. For example, if you want to export it as we export it as a net CDF file, uh, or you can uh, um, export it as what we call a multi-dimensional CRF, which is a very uh, it's just like a data cube optimized for storage in cloud storage, um, but it enables rapid access to any like profile things like profiles within the data sets. We have other data models as well, things like oriented imagery, which I'll be mentioning a little bit later, um, as well as last data sets, which are really it is um, uh, designed to support, better support um, point clouds and LIDAR data. So the various ways of actually managing data, uh, traditionally you might use ArcGIS Pro and uh, within ArcGIS Pro uh, manage your, 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 your imagery, um, be it on the, on the web or, sorry, on a cloud or, or local storage. But what many people then do is once you create a new mosaic data set, create those tile packages that I'd mentioned before and publish those to ArcGIS online as simple, simple base maps. That's been available for a long time. Also available for a long time has been the ability to publish those mosaic data sets to ArcGIS Image Server. And that really enables you to, to take that imagery, serve it out, either as this dynamic imagery or as, as tiles, but then also perform different analytics on the data. So you can really perform advanced analytics on the data. And because it's done on the server, that can scale up to run on multiple machines. Uh, it also provides things like author mapping, which uh, I'll come to a little, a little bit later. A couple of years ago, we added a, a, a user managed option. That's really for, for users within the organization can upload their imagery directly to ArcGIS Image Server. So if you have imagery uh, in your laptop, you can just push it up to ArcGIS Image Server, and then it can be essentially served back to you or others within your organization or, or externally. Um, and so that's really the, the user managed or hosted options that are available. And similarly, you could do that and upload, upload those tile caches to ArcGIS Online as well. What was released um, in September this uh, in in June this year was ArcGIS Image for ArcGIS Online, and that was really the ability to enable you to serve the imagery without actually having to set up your own infrastructure. So you can use this hosted imagery option and push the imagery into ArcGIS Online, from which it'll actually be served as dynamic imagery, tiled imagery, but also uh, give you the ability to perform different types of analysis. I'll cover. I'll give you a little demo, demo of some sort of analysis that you can do directly in the cloud without requiring um, any infrastructure of your own. We also released ArcGIS Image Dedicated. And this is really more for scaling up to organizations that have large volumes of imagery already stored in the cloud, and they don't want to move it into ArcGIS Online, it's already in the cloud, but they may not want to set up their own infrastructure to manage the, the data or to serve the data or the processes. So in that case, it's a subscription where Esri will actually stand up compute next to the storage in your in, in the cloud, either in Avanson uh, or, or Azure, um, and then you can just um, get us, um, perform the analysis and serving of the data directly without having to, 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 to access or manage, manage the data or download it in any way. 
Let's move along to the mapping component of it. This is really about you know, generating products from the imagery that you may have within your organization. And again, there's a whole flow of different capabilities from various tools to capture the images. So for example, from drone imagery to sort of pilot and capture drone imagery. Um, but then we also support um, lots of types of imagery for the processes of error triangulation and block adjustment. So uh, RPS has got some really good tools for or performing the let's say refinement of the orientation of the imagery to make it make sure that it's, it's it's accurate, the creation of various products, and then the extraction of features. And this is done through various products. There is RTS um, RTS Site Scan, which is a pure SaaS solution. There is Drone to Map, uh, which is really for primarily for drones as a standalone application. But then there's also auth mapping as a capability of RTS Pro to work with all this data. And then for organizations that really want to scale up to massive volumes, we have a product called Sure for RTIS. So the first process typically is to, you know, to image, to, to, to collect and image the data, then to support the different sensor models. So we support satellite and digital aerial drone imagery, and with you know, whether it's also thermal drone imagery as well, as well as multispectral drone imagery. And then there's the aspect of performing, let's say, the calibration and adjustment of the, of, of the imagery. So all those tools are provided. Then for the creation of the image, imagery products, uh, you can generate various products, including photometric point clouds, digital surface models and DTMs, but also different types of terrain um, auth auth mosaics. So these can be what we call dynamic auth mosaics, where you same area is, auth, um, in, is available from different angles, a DTM uh, auth mosaic, where the terrain model is used as the basis, and sometimes the buildings can lead away from, from, the, from the frame center or a DSM or, or surface auth mosaic, which is really designed to or ensures that you have always a totally top-down view, even on objects which are above the terrain. And then this aspect of generating 3D meshes. So these are also capabilities there to generate very detailed, large scale and extent uh, um, 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 DTM, uh, DS, 3D meshes, sorry, uh, of areas, which can then be used in a lot of 3D applications as well. Uh, once the data is, 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 is a process to create these different products, there are also the tools for doing things like feature extraction, either in manual or automated ways. And that can be using things like deep learning to extract things like footprints, or to use things like stereo editing to extract features using, using stereo, stereo tools. Uh, so lots of tools available to extract information uh, as, as, as measurements, um, for example, you want to collect, you know, have stockpiles and you want to find the volumes of stockpiles, all those tools are, in, are, in, are included. Let's move on to the analysis aspects of it. So from, an, from analysis, um, oh, you know, Esri has a huge pedigree of different analysis tools that have been developed over, over the years, so extremely extensive, covering all types of uh, analysis from, you know, um, more traditional image classification approaches to more recent, you know, deep learning and machine learning um, capabilities, things like change de uh, detection, but also working a lot of tools with things like multidimensional data, and then over to aspects such as hydrological modeling or different terrain analysis. So also a lot of RAS, more traditional raster analysis, like map RAS algebra type um, applications that can be, can be done, and all of those tools are available. So it's really about finding the spatial patterns uh, taking the imagery and looking at things like vegetation and health, um, computing things like impervious surfaces, um, land, land cover classification, and the tools are all there. And there are multiple ways of running those tools. You can run those tools directly in RTS Pro. Those sort, same tools work in RTS um, Enterprise. Those same tools work in, 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 in the web through RTS Image for RTS Online, or actually through uh, RTS Image Dedicated. So there's a really depending on the, the way that you want to implement it, you can implement it in, in different, um, mod, um, different ways. Um, from, this, from the multi-dimensional multi analysis, uh, this is multi-dimensional analysis of both, let's say, feature data, uh, so let's say point type data typically, uh, but also a lot of tools for working with imagery and rasters. So this is for things like trend analysis, anomaly detection, um, doing things like predictions, so a lot of those a full range of really advanced tools are there for doing analysis on multidimensional data, as well as things like visualizing box, box layers. Deep learning is certainly an area that has, has grown immensely in the last in the, in the last years, and Esri supports 
full range of uh, deep learning capabilities. Uh, we have we integrate the tools uh, from multiple from multiple in, in, uh, inferencing engines, uh, things like you know um, uh, TensorFlow and um, yeah, uh, and, and SciPy, and there are a lot of lot of different tools that we 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 provide. We support the models and really enable the uh, creation and extraction of uh, um, different features using deep, deep learning. So it really provides a complete workflow. So we provide the tools for image management, as I mentioned before, but then really the kit tools to generate the labels uh, which are required for the deep learning and preparing those labels to create the data sets required to do the actual training of the models. Once the models are available, then we can perform the inferencing. Uh, and then from the inferencing results, you can derive various insights within ArcGIS and do the sharing of, the, of, of those data sets. So it really is the complete workflow on a wide variety of data types. So we support you know, obviously things like imagery, you know, satellite imagery and aerial imagery. And we will see that we support other things like motion imagery and point clouds, uh, LIDAR. So it's re really a range of data types and modalities are, are supported to perform various um, tasks such as object classification, object detection, um, and object tracking, pixel classification. So these are a lot of different tasks that we can be performed using uh, the deep, deep learning. Another aspect of deep learning is, you know, how do you actually, is a, there's potentially, it's, a, it's, a, it's an extensive workflow, but what if you don't want to do all the training? Well, we also provide the deep tra the pre-trained models. So within ArcGIS um, um, Living Atlas, uh, you can download, I think it's about 15 or 20 and pre-trained models that have been created so far, uh, and they will be extended over, the, over over time. And so these are models which have been trained on millions and millions of data sets uh, and can be then uh, um, directly used. So you can if you just use those models and apply them on your data to perform inferencing. And if you want to then update the models, you can actually update them as well with using the tools so you can refine them uh, to improve the deep learning results on the specific data sets that you actually want to run it on. So those pre-trained models really save you a lot of, lot of time in having to otherwise train the models from scratch. Um, raster analytics is also available in, in ArcGIS Online. So all these tools that I'm mentioning for performing deep learning and change, class, um, change detection and stuff like that are all, all available in ArcGIS Image for ArcGIS Online. Um, so that's um, available. Um, so there, there are a lot of tools, as well as in ArcGIS Online, we're, we're creating something called Extract, which is a tool to enable you to extract information from the Living Atlas and load it into ArcGIS Online. What I did was quick, quick, go, go for a very quick demo on, on how this works. This is, for example, ArcGIS Online. You have your, your contents, contents page in ArcGIS Online. And if you wanted to upload some data, you would actually say Create. Uh, and then pick a layer. For example, I want to add, I want to add an image layer. There are lots of different layers that you can create. But we'll just, in this case, go to show the imagery layer. You can define then if whether you want tiled imagery or dynamic imagery. Tiled imagery is really imagery where the process, processing is done on the client side, and dynamic imagery is where the imagery processing is done on the server side. So we'll do dynamic imagery first. Um, you can then define what the data what you want to create. In this case, I want to, I'm going to use Landsat data and create a single mosaic um, from the image from Landsat imagery. Uh, so I can define my data source, in this case Landsat, um, configure various properties of what I want to do with that Landsat data. And so I can define things like, you know, no data is zero. I want to, you know, black areas removed. And I can define, I, for example, I want the multispectral data because I want to do some analysis of multispectral. I can apply that and then really just drag and drop. Uh, the images um, into the browser, and they will then get automatically uploaded into ArcGIS Online. So that loads all those images up. That can obviously take time depending on how much, how much data you upload. At the same time, you can then define things like the title, uh, the tags that may be used. So these are typical items used uh, or tags used to represent the items. The data is then uploaded, and as soon as it gets uploaded, and what's created is what we call an item in ArcGIS Online that defines it, and you can see the various properties of it. In this case, it's a it's 30 meter resolution Landsat data, uh, and you can then go into the uh, the viewer and uh, see see the imagery. I mentioned this was dynamic imagery. Uh, that means that we can actually set properties, and the server is going to process it. So we go to image display, set for example different band combinations. I want to see band combinations with near infrared. 
um, red and then green. If we apply that, then the server will actually immediately return those results. If we pan and zoom around, you will see that that's, that service will be then rendered rendered with, uh, with that data. Request is made to the server, the server processes it and returns it essentially instantaneously. So you can do a number of different um, visual processing of this, of this data by just changing things like band combinations, or you can actually go into the various analysis capabilities if you have a subscription for RTS image for RTS online. And this, is, this allows a whole range of different types of analysis, including using the raster, what we call the raster function chains. So these raster function chains are loaded up in an editor. You know, there are hundreds, there's about 150 of these, of these uh, um, uh, functions, and you can search for specific ones. So let's say we do want to, want to do a band arithmetic. I can pick band arithmetic, see the ones which do different types of arithmetic, uh, select that one. Uh, then I can actually um, define, I want to add a raster. I want to connect in the, in the interface, the raster to the arithmetic function and define various properties. Um, so in this case, we want to do a modified normalized difference water index. So I can sort of select, select, select that or just enter the indexes that I want, apply that. And then if I actually go back to the, 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 the system, I can actually look at the preview of it and see what the results of that would, would look like. And if I want to actually assist the layer as a new layer, I can actually run that analysis. And what that will do is actually create a new tiled imagery layer in this particular case, uh, which is going to represent, which is going to be that output um, of that process, which is just all, all in the web. So I, obviously I can do identify and get the data values. So all that data is there. And then if I wanted to do additional analysis, I could either extend it to the original function chain or uh, essentially add, add additional Add an additional process. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to say I want to do a, uh, a select or do a mask of all the data greater than a particular value. Uh, so I can define a new output um, and then define that I want to output this as a, a new data set. Uh, so put in things like the name, where, where I want to output it to, run analysis. And once that's run and processed, you'll get another in this case, flooded area. This is what we call tiled imagery. So the data has actually been streamed back to the client, but again, the client can now actually um, do different rendering. So in the client, for example, I can change it to a classified renderer and specify that you know every, all the values under 0.5, I don't want to see everything over 0.1. Over 0.5 is going to be water, and therefore we have the sort of extent of my water mask or from the Landsat imagery. So a lot of really, really powerful capabilities there. If we go on to visualization, uh, which is the, the last part that I'm going to be covering. Again, a lot of tools for working with uh, um, imagery and making them accessible in different ways uh, in different applications. Uh, these applications range from, you know, ArcGIS Pro is the primary uh, you know, desktop application for working with all types of spatial data, um, but also within that, um, there are tools for working with multidimensional data and stereo imagery and motion imagery and data in image space. But then we also have lots of other applications that can be used, things like web applications, such as Excalibur, uh, operations dashboards, uh, but then provide also the APIs that enable you to create a wide range of different applications using uh, things like JavaScript or just using configur configurable templates. So a lot of different tools to make that imagery uh, or in interact with that imagery and create those visual, visual applications. As I mentioned, RTS Pro, uh, you know, has the capabilities of, you know, doing all the different types of renderers. It directly supports the different types of, of, of images. It directly uses these raster functions that allow you to do all those different types of processing and analysis. It has extensive charts for, for displaying, you know, time timelines and uh, image histograms and stuff like that. And then there's also the information panes, which provide uh, in, literally information on every single pixel within, 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 the, within the data sets. Um, ArcGIS Pro can be extended with the image analyst extension, and that provides even more capabilities for working with multi-dimensional data, doing things like visualization of, of voxels, uh, looking at um, it, defining a lot of tools for working with multi-dimensional data, stereo imagery, working with motion imagery, and then the sort of image space work, which is typically from satellite or oblique, or, or oblique imagery. You can also create apps, and Rena is going to be showing a couple of these apps that in, in, in a minute, so we can have a look at, at those apps of how we, or how those instant apps work. So you can either 
build those apps with literally no code or low code um, or create um, the, using experience builder or code lower level using web app builder to uh, actually code uh, and based on a set of widgets and put together applications yourself so this can be very 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 powerful Another area of interest is oriented imagery. Um, this is really working with imagery, which is not major imagery. Um, so we have a oriented imagery provides a whole lot of tools for uh, referencing uh, this type of imagery. Um, it may be imagery from drones, it may be imagery from terrestrial sensors or, or, or you know, 360 imagery. Uh, so it provides those tools that allow, allow you to integrate this type of what we call oriented imagery into applications. So um, this can combine the imagery uh, with things like LiDAR data uh, or, or support things like 360 video um, from you know, terrestrial, terrestrial sensors. So there's a lot of, lot of, lot of capabilities there. So in summary, uh, yeah, ArcGIS, you know, it has a huge amount of imagery capabilities. I do recommend you really start looking into the capabilities there. As I said, they're broken down into these sort of five key areas. Uh, so there's a lot there. I mean, much too much to go into a lot of detail in, in, this, in, this, in this short webinar, but I highly recommend you, you try, it, try, it, try it out and um, work with the data. And with that, I'll hand you back over to Arena. Thank you, Peter. That's a lot of information. I like it. it's a lot of like updates in all capabilities. Um, and then the, the beauty of this as well, that uh, it's, you can, you can, Use the same tool, similar tool in the desktop, in the server, it's also in the cloud as well. So I'm going to start sharing my screen here. Um, let me see with the screen monitor too here. Okay. Um, so before we move on to the next segments, I would we would like to do another poll question in here. It's so many tools that everybody probably using the variety of different tools. So let's open the, the second poll here and then we would like to ask what actually primary tools you are using for image, image and raster analysis. Uh, you, this is multiple choices. You can choose which one that you like in here. So, um, And any of you have the question, feel free if you want to, to type in into the equation windows. We're gonna make sure that have time to cover that as well. Okay. All right, it seems like um, it's most of you already voted. Thank you so much. Uh, let's close the poll and I'm gonna start with the with the next segment in here, we are going to talk about the resources. So some of you probably would like to get started and uh, for teaching, for learning by yourself or for, for research. So there is a bunch of the resources. This is like one thing that we, we provide a lot lately is really about resources. So Peter talk about ready to use imagery, but what I'm going to talk in here is ready to use apps. This apps is the imagery explorer, so you can explore those available images that Peter said and without installing anything. Okay, uh, for that I'm going to bring up my um, story map in here. So we're going to put the link to the story map. And in the story map um, here, you can see all these massive imagery collections, the one that Peter mentioned. And the one that I'm gonna bring to your attention is the imagery web apps. So we have the Lancet Explorer, Sentinel Explorer, Earth Observation Explorer, and also World Imagery Web Pack. Okay. So it's, it's a list of them, uh, the app that you can actually run and, and use it for exploring the imagery. So I give you a ex very quickly example here. This is the demo of the Earth Observation Explorer. This is about exploring the um, Kilauea volcano in Hawaii, December 20, 2022, sorry, 2020. So you can see the lava in, in the creature in here. You can use the Earth Explorer and you just go to the location of that. And then you can actually change the imagery and I'm gonna change it, for example, to the Sentinel. Uh, so I get a better um, view of that. And then use the natural color 
and what I can do as well, actually, I can do the custom band combination and I'm going to choose, for example, the best is the short wave infrared for releasing the lava and then do some of the um, stretching and gamma as well. So I have a better view of the lava in here. And then moreover as well, you can select any of the date before and after the eruption. So you can see how the eruption uh, progressive. For example, the January 7 is give the clear day to see to see all this uh, uh, lava. And the other thing is you can do a spectral profile, maybe the the spectral profile on certain location in the lava, and it's gonna give you the the profile also which one typical. So it's like desert one in this case, and you can do it as well with other location and then see how is the spectral profile. On the top of that, you can also see the spectral spectral plot, and you can see like what is the combination between near infrared and short wave infrared and um and and detect. What this look like is like a molten lava, or it's cloud, or smoke, or or just seems just the cool lava around the area. So I think this is very nice. If you like, you can you can try it even in the story map itself. It's, um, the um, explorer, as as I said again, there's many other and fewer. You can use it for learning. You can also use it for teaching. Um, is it publicly available? that we are used for exploring all the images that we have in Living Atlas of the World. Uh, but if you like to build your own web app with imagery, so you want to build your own imagery viewer, you can do that as well. Okay. So the, the one thing is first you prepare your web map, make sure that all the bad combination that you want and what is the purpose of this and then you're gonna save that web map is either you created in ArcGIS online for example and as Peter said there are template for interpret imagery so this imagery mask image visit and image imagery viewer and you can create that when you create that you can customize it more um, uh, the, again, this is a configurable. You don't have to do any coding on that. So you can set the about, the interactivity, the theme, and the layout, and then um, then finally you can refine your uh, full setup and add it into the data. So it's, um, it's is the story map again that we share. So it's kind of like catching up in here, but you can see it in the story map. Now that one is, um, that's the viewer. And we also have the story map featuring the imagery. So you can use it as well for learning or teaching. And we can, we will share you the link. Now the other thing that we have, and this is big actually. So all that viewer is probably good for just introduction to imagery and exploration. But what if you have that more advanced topic, advanced capability? Um, across the team at ASRI, we actually built what ArcGIS, what is called ArcGIS imagery workflow. This is the resources to help you for all the capability of imagery that Peter mentioned: management, mapping, analysis, visualization, content. We have the, the latest workflow, if you are interested in here, or you can go into the gallery of this uh, workflow. So in the gallery, you can choose what the workflow that you like, maybe for analysis, what data type that you like on that, and you can select that, and then you can um, choose one of them. For example, for analyzing the multi-dimensional data. So then it will open into that um, workflow, and that you go into um, all these uh, the resources for this topic, imagery workflow resource, and then um, the learn lesson, the blog, the video, the training, all related into the multidimensional data. Okay. And the other thing is if you like to do the tutorial, so maybe some of you have the want to teach about the rust using raster function in ArcGIS Pro, then uh, this workflow will give you all the tutorial step by step how to do the raster function in here. Okay. And then uh, we also have the uh, best practices. I like the best practices always on different topic in here, such as like how to creating and maintaining mosaic data sets. 
We also have the MOOC. Um, this is the the S3 MOOC program that we uh, created the new one for imagery in action. So you probably want to check. We just finished it. Um, then check for the next availability. And the last thing, if you forgot everything about this, we can use, we have the higher education uh, landing page in imagery and remote sensing where you can have all the link into the recorded webinar, GUI, learning and everything. Okay. So that's some of the resources that I want to share with you. Uh, I included in the slide and I'm gonna also send it to you. But we have one big um, um, resource that are built by Learn Team. So that will be um, the one that we presented by Delphine. Without further ado, I think I'm going to stop sharing in here and then send it to Delvin. Yes, thank you, Arena. Let me see if I can um, share my screen. I'm not seeing it. Yes, here we are. Okay. Can you see my screen with the Learn website? Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> yes, so in my team, uh, Learn ArcGIS, we develop guided lessons and other learning resources. And uh, we then publish uh, these materials on our site uh, that you can see here right now. And uh, Rosemary is going to be uh, posting the, the link. Um, so I'm going to uh, introduce you to some of these materials, and I should say that all the materials we post on our website are available to all uh, completely for free. Okay, so here is the homepage, and um, you can here explore our materials by experience, that is by user profile, such as professor or student. Um, can you... Still see my screen? Yes, Delphine. Okay, okay, because something's changed. Okay, all right. Um, and then uh, we, you can also search uh, by capability, which are by types of uh, GIS activity. For instance, here uh, you can have, uh, you have imagery and remote sensing, which certainly would be the most uh, relevant to the topic of this webinar. Another thing you can do is search all content and I'm going to show you how look, how to look specifically for imagery and remote sensing related content. So what we're going to do is first we're going to look for lessons, which are those guided lessons I was mentioning um, at first. And we're going to, to uh, filter by capability, uh, imagery and remote sensing. And what we can see here are all um, uh, lessons that um, all our lessons are um, basically uh, on um, a scenario base, which means they show you how to solve a real world problem or how to analyze a real world problem. Um, for, I'm going to show you one, uh, one example, for, for instance, this one here, uh, which is um, uh, we're looking at a lake in China that has been shrinking over the years, and we're going to basically me measure, thanks to imagery, uh, how much it has actually shrunk in the space of 10 years. That's just one example. Um, here we are looking at, uh, you know, um, how, to, how to measure the uh, impact of a wildfire in a, a forest. Um, and all our lessons are step-by-step uh, -step workflows where we're going to explain to you exactly how to do it and why to do it. And I'll show you a little bit more of that a little bit uh, later in my presentation. So those are all lessons uh, on imagery and remote sensing. Another thing that might interest you, if you look on the type and you reduce, you filter by course and curriculum, you're going to see um, here three uh, courses uh, or packages. Uh, and this is something a little bit new in our team because we used to really do de develop our content um, one lesson at a time. And now we started developing uh, courses or packages on specific topic where we group a number of lessons all on one topic. For now, we have three and we're going to be adding more. And the one that the most uh, relevant to this webinar is introduction to imagery and uh, remote sensing. So we're going to spend a little bit of time uh, looking at it. And um, so 
we are going to, uh, first of all, I will tell you a little bit about it, and then we will uh, take a look at uh, its content. So the idea here is that um, we uh, wanted to create a package that uh, could help the development of university level curricula. Um, it contains a variety of hands-on materials that demonstrate modern workflows and current best practices. Um, these materials were developed collaboratively with Esri's imagery team and other experts. And they can be assigned to students by instructors in the context of a course, and they can also be uh, used by students for self-learning. Um, our goal was to cover the basics of imagery and remote sensing, uh, but also give a taste of engaging techniques such as working with drone imagery, LIDAR, or deep learning. So you can see here that uh, it's divided up into five sections, which you can also browse at the top here, and we're going to go through them uh, quickly. So the first section is discovering imagery. We are here just exploring, learning a little bit, um, and we have uh, some uh, overview slides that illustrate some of the important concepts um, that, that to understand in this uh, relevant to this section. And then we have, uh, for instance, here a lesson, which is a very introductory level. This is done with one of those uh, web apps that um, was uh, demoed a bit earlier, looking at Landsat um, imagery and understanding uh, some basics about uh, um, band combinations and while understanding what imagery is useful for in the real world. We also have some interactive web apps where the students can uh, look at um, the illustration of a, a concept that is important to um, imagery and remote sensing, such as in this case, uh, better understanding uh, spatial resolution or bands. Um, and here is another lesson. The second section is working with imagery, and here we are going to uh, start actually interacting and um, uh, in a more um, active manner with imagery, learn to prepare it, understand what is a workflow that we might um, uh, uh, execute uh, for, with imagery. Um, in this case, it's the uh, assess burn scar um, uh, lesson to uh, understand uh, the impact of a wildfire. Uh, more of those interactive web apps, as well as uh, some, you know, how to prepare imagery for analysis. Then we arrive uh, at the third section, which is extracting information from imagery. And here we are now, now starting and looking at true analysis, where we want to produce new information out of imagery, uh, such as in this case, calculate impervious surfaces from a spectral imagery where we're going to be using supervised classification to understand um, how much um, impervious surfaces exist in um, parcels, which is important for stormwater management. Um, same structure here for the rest of the, the section. Um, you can see uh, here we, we do a little bit of, after doing some classification, more classical, uh, classic type of um, uh, um, sorry, um, uh, classifications and analyzing change, looking at how things have changed thanks to imagery. We also uh, learn to apply uh, deep learning on a simple example that is um, accessible to beginners or, or to people who are not too advanced, as well as learning to uh, assess the accuracy of um, uh, an analysis you've done and a classification you've done. The fourth section, working with elevation and time, uh, here we're branching out a little bit from a multispectral imagery, uh, looking at uh, elevation. For instance, here we're looking in a man Manhattan at um, predicting a flood, like the areas that will be flooded when there is a storm surge of a specific height. Um, we also work with da uh, LIDAR data, um, drone. Um, we look at the, the, working with drone imagery and uh, doing various types of analysis with it as well as um, working with multidimensional and temporal data. That is here we're looking at series of um, uh, data where we look at different time points and we try to look at trends or things that happened over time. For instance, in this one, monitor forest change over time. We looked um, uh, at using Landsat um, satellite imagery 
we uh, over 34 years we look at how a specific forest has been evolving which areas have been logged which area have like grown again and which you know would be useful for in the context of forestry all right finally uh, the fifth section uh, leveraging the power of gis we sort of wrap everything uh, back uh, to um, GIS and uh, look at how um, uh, you will use uh, the result of your uh, imagery analysis to, for instance, integrate it with uh, other types of uh, GIS data, such as uh, uh, polygon data or point data, to do further analysis, for instance, here, a suitability analysis. Um, I'm gather, gu guessing I'm arriving at the end of my time, so I can uh, pass it back, back on to um, Rena, and I definitely hope you will take advantage of uh, our resources. Thank you, Delphine. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have the labs to have the uh, Q&A. Okay. Um, so we're going to start with, with uh, Roger from Canada. This is a question for Peter in here. Um, will, will someone be able to speak about the improvement of Landsat 9 imagery has offered Landsat 8 imagery? How about that, Peter? OK, uh, well, Landsat 9 is obviously it's just, it's just gotten, was launched uh, very recently, is up. It seems to be working well. Um, uh, it was the, sort of the first look it became available a couple of days ago, so we're excited to get that um, available. Uh, really, Landsat 9, mind you, is really just extension. It's, it's very, very similar to Landsat 8, uh, so there is some improvements, a little bit in the dynamic range, um, but primarily the product is going to be very, very similar to Landsat 8, so it's really make, ensuring the continuity. Um, we don't really have a timeline yet when that is going to be available within, within the Living Atlas, um, because we don't know that from the USGS quite yet. Um, but as soon as it is, is available, we'll ensure that we add that as well. So yeah, we're looking forward to it. It's just not there quite yet. So Awesome. And one more, Peter, you show about the swipe of the land cover, the swipe application of data search. Joseph asked if that swipe application to, for the land cover is, is available. <laughs> so that, that that swipe application was actually set up um, by actually somebody within, within Esri. Um, I'd actually asked him to do it for, for another presentation I gave a couple of weeks ago, and it was put together literally in a couple of hours. So it really is just an application based on, on, on the, the, the JavaScript API. Uh, so um, the code for that specific swipe application, I'm not quite sure if it's available, um, but really it was just put together at, at using, using the standard off-the-shelf tools. Um, so there wasn't really any coding involved in it. It was put, putting those, well, very little coding involved Put, put it together. I do expect, mind you, that we will be creating a specific, you know, as soon as the land cover um, um, tools are available for multiple years, we'll include in one of the many applications a swipe application. I'm sure the source code for that will become available as well. So, yeah, that particular one is not unavailable yet, but uh, it'll become available yeah. soon. Maybe a good candidate for Learn Theme to create a <laughs> lesson on that. Okay. Um, good. So I don't know, but there's it's a little bit breaking in, in my end for you for your voice um, but maybe okay. it's only me or I don't okay there's another question in here it's a little bit deep in here um, uh, told you want to know want to apply deep learning using the name images in mm -hmm. the entire US but doesn't want to download the entire knife images into his local computer can can he use the RGS deep learning facility to process and what is the best practices here Okay, fine. So if you, if, I mean, obviously within within ArcGIS Image for ArcGIS Online, you can take extracts of that NAPE imagery and do do, do the processing on that. Um, but it, that, using ArcGIS Image for ArcGIS Online would not be the way you wanted to do on across the whole of the United States at the moment. Um, the way to do that would actually be use ArcGIS Image dedicated. Um, so I'd, I'd, I'd mention that um, that's really the ability where we actually stand up dedicated compute um, next to the to to the data. Uh, and then you can run your, your deep learning on that. And then we just really just charge for the compute cycles uh, that, that, were, that were used for that. So if you want if you want to do uh, things like deep learning on really, really large data sets, like the whole of the United States or the whole world, uh, then the, the way to do it at, at the moment is either stand up your own ArcGIS image server um, in ArcGIS and in, in, in the cloud uh, or use ArcGIS image dedicated. 
the key aspect here is to make sure the processing is done right next to the data otherwise the egress costs become very 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 large so, so you can either set up your own servers or use ArcGIS image dedicated get a subscription for that and then you can run the deep learning very quickly on on the massive massive data sets Awesome. Thank you, Peter. That's all we have time for the QA. I also answered a few questions by typing there. Um, if you see, we have a lot of resources. So we have a lot of new capabilities in the in the ArcGIS image, but we have a lot of resources for you to get started as well. Now, don't worry about this. I'm going to send you email a, a week after this uh, webinar to include all the list and also link to the recording and the slide as well. And I just want to, to mention in here as well, we have upcoming events. We have another S3 collaboration webinar with AAG on the GIS day on the exploring communities through the equity lens. Now, if you want to attend another web Webinar on imagery. We have the one coming up on manage imagery and raster for campus access December 2. Really about managing imagery. And don't forget, we're going to be in AAG 2022 at the New York City for annual meeting February 25th. So please, please come and say hi to us. And on behalf of all of us, thank you so much for attending this webinar. Again, please um, contact us if you like more information. I put my email in here. Uh, there is a survey going out as well. If you respond to that, we will contact you. And I appreciate Peter and uh, Delphine for presenting today. Thank you, everyone.